Hey everyone and welcome back to another Pi game devlog of Sharks and Alpacas. A chill survival game set on an isolated island where you and your alpaca are stranded. Since the last video I moved from Japan all the way to Switzerland and at least found a temporary place to stay. That being said, I was able to make a surprising amount of progress. For today though I decided to focus only on a few features I wanted to talk about. First off, let's talk about the UI overhaul. Until now I've been using a rather rudimentary set of buttons and overlays, but I finally decided to work on some design elements with more character. Namely, I tried to blend our hexagons are bestagons theme into the user interface. Working exclusively with polygons, I had to learn about an interesting aspect of Pygame surfaces to get it to work. When you use Blit to add an object to a surface, the default is to override the pixel values and in case of transparency to blend the colors according to the alpha values between the object and the surface. But you can also use it to subtract your pixel values instead. For instance, to generate a button, I draw a rectangle, subtract a hexagon that is slightly bigger than the button's height, and finally add a hexagon with the same height as the button back to it. This allows the creation of this kind of outline effect. Using the same concept in all four corners, I get a nice and clean frame for any UI window of any size. For the crafting window in particular, I also added some white highlights to make the different components a bit easier to see. Now, this may not be the ultimate iteration, but I'm rather pleased with the current state of it. By the way, for those seeking UI inspiration, I came across this website called GameUIDatabase.com. It's a great resource featuring a huge collection of game screenshots, menus and icons from all kinds of games and genres. One of the driving factors behind the UI redesign was the introduction of a reward selection window. After defeating a wave of sharks and interacting with the merchant, players can now choose their reward from three randomized slots. For now it's still only either another alpaca or projectiles, but of course there will be more options down the road. I think the system will be essential to add a bit more depth to the progression and add more strategy and hence also drive player engagement. Talking about the merchant, instead of a straight line path, which occasionally got the boat stuck on unreachable tiles, it now continuously adjusts its course towards the player. So the player has the ability to guide the merchant around these tiles that would just get it stuck. In our last video we discussed the lose condition, but there was no real way to compare your performance with other runs you did before. So I used the new UI elements to implement a scoreboard that shows up on the game over screen. This required the implementation of yet another UI element though, namely a text box. Of course this is something that has been implemented countless times before, so I had some references to start from. The basic idea is the box registers when you click on it and activates. Once activated, it tracks your keystrokes and adds them to a string until you reach a character limit at which point the color changes. Enter and Backspace are treated as a special input and they trigger saving and deletion of characters respectively. The saving is simply done to a JSON file and that's it, we have a scoreboard now. Lastly, I've added a kind of speech bubble for character dialogue. Using the tooltip class as a foundation, it was actually fairly straightforward to implement. I just had to add two more details. One thing was having the text appear letter by letter to mimic natural speech. To achieve this, I render the whole text once to get the dimensions of the bubble, and then I render it again properly using the timer to determine how many letters should be shown. Currently the timer is set to 40 milliseconds per letter, which should be a bit faster than most people read, but I might adjust it a bit later. The second feature I wanted was the ability to chain speech bubbles together. So instead of instantiating it with a string, I instantiate it with a list of strings. Once the timer expires, it removes the first item from the list and instantiates itself with the remaining list of strings. This worked surprisingly smoothly, almost right off the bat. Now we have a merchant with at least a little bit of personality and I think it adds a lot to the game, so I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Alright, thanks for tuning in to this devlog. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And in the next video, we'll delve into all the visual changes I did, including the introduction of a new tree type. So I'm looking forward to that and I can't wait to see you then.